Headline us. Okay, so this kind of stems off of what my gut reaction was to seeing people talk about the Prey demo um, and just people trying to figure out how to cover this game uh, the week before its release because Bethesda, we are in the the midst of their, uh, hey, we're not going to send out pre-review copies of any of our games. And so I'm curious because you and I have different uh, triggers for making purchases um i'm i feel like i'm quite quite jaded when it comes to this uh but um curious where you stand in that when i saw that there was a one hour demo and then i saw that uh all the pre-review coverage was you know this game to a certain point and everyone's saying that you know what we don't know what to say about the the full prey game but uh the intro is pretty great and uh and I just, I was struck by, that has absolutely no effect on me. <laughs> like, this is not <laughs> enough information. Stop talking until you have something I can use. And it, it just, so it was like a very negative gut reaction for me of like, this isn't coverage. Like, admit where we're at, you can't cover the game. So let's not, don't give them the free press if that's like, if you're going to try to make this change, like if you want Bethesda mm-hmm. to act any differently, covering their demo, covering, covering, like doing a pre pre review, doesn't doesn't motivate them to change this policy in in, in any useful way. Because I, you know, I like having um, reviews a couple days out before I make my purchase decision. You know, like I've met, you know, I'm not one of those that. You know, I don't. I do pre-order some stuff depending on goodies and my allegiance to the franchise or whatever. But mm-hmm. in general, when I don't know much about a game, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait a couple days. Preferably, I would like the review before uh, a day or two before it's actually released, so I can get in on the zeitgeist and play it on that first day. But yeah, in praise uh, praise uh, case, I was I'm willing to wait another week because honestly. Dishonored 2 was a little bit rough on the platform that I want to play Prey on, and it's from the same yeah. studio, so I was going to see how that stuff kind of rolled out. And I don't know. What were you... Did you react at all? Like, do you do you care about Prey, or do you... Or uh, I think another another good example would be, you know, we talked a while back about just Mass Effect's kind of mm-hmm. pre-release coverage with its five-hour demo and that sort of thing. So mm-hmm. where do you land with yeah, I'm- this? Prey, Prey is not, not uh, on my radar... Um, but I mean, Mass Effect certainly was, and I think that, um, uh, that demo did them so much harm, yeah. uh, yeah. because, you, because, uh, you know, what people were talking about with that pre-release, it, it went the opposite way where people were just like, this has got problems. Like there's this, something is wrong here. Like this game doesn't feel finished. And like, I was like, well, that's a, that's a hard no right now because I have got, two very very good games i can be playing right now and i don't need to spend 60 dollars on a game that doesn't seem like it got finished um so it's it's i feel like they're just really playing um with fire here i feel like not giving out the pre-release copies not letting reviewers get a a, like a, a chance to look at a game before it comes out um you know sometimes it works and 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 sometimes it really doesn't. Um, I I'm with you, like especially with a game that I'm on the fence about. Like I'm not plunking down sixty bucks without knowing if it's going to be something that I'm going to enjoy. If it's Red Dead Redemption Two, I will give them the money the second they say it. <laughs> but that's but that's because they have earned that. Like that's not. I will go something buy Red Dead just... Redemption One again. <laughs> I, I would totally. And I'll give that Sony, NPC. please, <laughs> for the love of God, re- release it for PS4. PlayStation Now is not a thing. Um, <laughs> so much, but, so much but, truth. Yeah, but you know, like, like that's that's an earned thing. Like Zelda was the same way. Like I didn't need the people to tell me that Zelda was great. I was going to play Zelda because it's a great franchise, and it could have been bad. You thought it was going to be bad. Yeah, you thought it was going to be unfinished, and yep. you had me worried, but yep. I bought it anyway. Yep, and I bought it too. We were, I bought it anyway too. Everyone, <laughs> everyone was wrong, but but you know, like with a with a franchise like Prey, um, or or you know, like Mass Effect coming back with a brand new developer and not the same team, 
I think that, you know, you need to, you kind of have to look at where you are in the landscape and say, you know, maybe we should get this out in front of people. And part of that could be, they know that it's not done. They know that there's that's, problems. I hate that. That's where, that's where my head went. I was like, of course. Oh, so yeah, you're showing off the intro cause you focused on it and it's real good. And for some reason, yeah. And that was the that. same that was the same thing that you talked about with Zelda when we heard people talking about playing it at the the you know the event in New York City. Sure, and the like, plateau's great. <laughs> exactly. Like the intro is great, but and maybe the ending is great, but the middle of that game is gonna be horrendous. It's gonna be empty. Because that has happened. Like mm-hmm. we know that that's a thing. Um so yeah, it it it's a little bit strange that they're taking this strategy. It's it also just feels like standoffish. Like it's kind of like, well, we don't want to feed like, you know, these reviewers because they're just going to say mean things about our game. Yeah. And it's like, I, you know, I for for most of the time, I don't feel like video game reviewers are trying to be overly hostile towards their games. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, everybody okay. can get jaded from time to time like that's certainly a thing but i i don't know i just i feel like the risk reward of this situation is is not paying off in the long run for for publishers but i i guess i could be wrong i mean i'm hoping and i'm thinking that the pendulum's going to swing back i i don't think i don't think we've hit the breaking point here yet or whatever that point is where the pendulum stops and you're going back the other way um in that eventually the noise is going to get so loud out there from the content creators, the YouTube personalities and the, the people that you're going to, to get, you know, these, uh, you know, the reviews that the publishers actually want you to see, like when they have content deals and, you know, uh, blurring the lines between what's an advertisement and what's not. Eventually you're, it's going to come back around to wanting more uh, thoughtful reviews and, and better. I don't think those are, I think the days of like thoughtful written reviews have passed, but there will be other channels to find, you know, uh, the, the people that you, the reviewers that you connect with that can um, provide value in that space. And hopefully the publishers will have to adjust to that too. Uh, But that's just my, my hopes and dreams at this point, because I always find that useful. Like I can, you know, I I connect with five or six, uh, trusted reviewers in my different media forums that like can help me with alongside my peers figure out like what my next purchase decision is actually going to be, and mm-hmm. um, I do I just I think there are value to reviews like that, and I f- feel like there's a value to a kind of a symbiotic relationship between publishers and uh, journalists that actually you know cover it in, cover it in you know uh, an intelligent and and thoughtful way, um, but. You know, I also could be wrong in that regard, but uh, I just well, thought was, I think good. I, I feel like this is more a reaction to things like Metacritic and just like scores that come out because scores are so arbitrary. Mm-hmm. And like, if you haven't figured that out yet, like, like Justin said, like find some reviewers who you have a good connection with. You feel like they like the games that you like, like, like. I would not read reviews from Jeff Jeff Gershman because I don't agree with the things that he <laughs> likes. But I know that, and that's not a reflection on Jeff. Jeff's right. allowed to like whatever the crap he wants to like, and Justin, you are allowed to like whatever you like. And like, you and I will always see eye to eye in a game. Like that's fine. Find the people who you feel like you can trust and read their reviews. But I feel like Metacritic is like another whole thing where it's just like, well, here's just a number. And you don't know any of the context. You don't because like I've read plenty of reviews that start off with, I don't usually like first person shooters. And it's like, why are you reviewing? (laughs) Yeah, I don't don't need to know what you think about this game. Give it to somebody in the office who actually likes these kind of games because that's that's irrelevant. Like so. So but Metacritic doesn't have any of that context. Metacritic is the Rotten Tomatoes of the video game world. If you don't know this, it's just a distillation of here are all the numbers and we've assigned it this number but you don't know any of the context around how the individual pieces got to there. And so like, that's got to drive publishers nuts. Like if well, their I mean, game they... comes out the gate and it's a 65 out of a hundred or 6.5 or whatever. And you know, like it's like, well, like a bunch of people review this game and like, they don't even like this kind of game. And like, we, what can we do? Like, yeah, their answer is, well, we'll withhold it from them and, yeah. you know, let people try and buy it first. But it's like, ah, that, we got to figure out something better here. We got to figure out a relationship that works both for both sides. 
that's what I I feel like the I feel like the days of Metacritic are are de- Metacritic have, are definitely waning, and and yeah. I think you're even seeing more uh, sites kind of downplay their review scores a little bit or or change things up there. Um, which, Steam Steam switched to a thumbs up thumbs down <laughs> model, and uh, and then like I said, I think we're gonna go through a little bit here in the next three to four years of really figuring out all these con all all the youtubers and all the live streamers and all you know the content creators out there that are actually doing advertising uh, for mm-hmm. publishers uh once that stuff kind of levels off where you can determine what's an ad and what isn't i think the noise will calm down a little bit and then and then we'll see a new crop kind of kind of rise to the top that is actually useful again cuz it's uh, it's it's noisy and negative out there and i to some extent, I get why publishers don't want to play in that space, but there's something about the way Bethesda's approached it uh, from wanting co- to control their message that is is somewhat backwards and uh, mm-hmm. detrimental to you know um, my normal uh, my expected gaming purchase decisions. And I feel like it might be even doing prey a disservice at this point. And uh, uh, I was just struck by you know my negativity towards the demo of Mass Effect Andromeda was because of the quality of the game. And yep. then on the opposite end, here we're getting a demo for Prey, which I think this is a, that's a good thing, is offering demos. Like, that's something I would like to get mm-hmm. back to. But, but by all accounts, of purpose, uh, accounts the, you know, the, the demo's pretty good for Prey. Yet I still had a, a, a negative gut reaction to it because it was, it was just tied up in the, you know, how, how, can we, how can we not give them early review copies but still get good press for our game? That's how it came across to me. Right. And, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, hopefully we see a rever- resurgence in the value of reviews here in the next, uh, I'd say three to five years. I think still think we got a couple couple more years. Ooh, of you're going noise. you're going for the long play. Yeah, yeah. So um, there's still a lot of stuff shaking out in the in the YouTube world. I feel like. Uh, yeah, 